Welcome back, Asus fans. So we're back in the garage. We're going to talk about some fan stuff. As you can see, I got the lovely whiteboard with me here. Got plenty of dry erase markers going on. I got some fans. I got a harness. This is the same harness that is in the Blazer currently. This is the most updated one. Looking good. I attached the additional wires, and that's where the fan magic's happening. So the fans are turned on and off with the system on a ground trigger. So let's just weed out where our fan wires are. We got a purple one and we got a green one and they are a bit tangled. That's okay. Let's just get them pulled back here. No worries. These are the ones we're focusing on today. We got fan one and fan two. So these right here these will trigger the fans, and they only supply a ground signal, so they trigger ground through the ECU. So certain parameters are met, temperature, so on and so forth, and they just complete the circuit. When they do that, they pull in the relay, which is just a little electromechanical device that will pull a coil in and, and trigger it, and then send voltage from the battery through the relay out to your fan. Now, it's only going to push power to the positive side of each one of your fans, so fan 1 or fan 2 or vice versa. Or if you only got one, you can just use fan 1, like this one used to be set up for, and just turn your one fan on. So with that, your grounds are going to go off to a good ground. These are heavy duty because these do pull a lot of amperage. So that's why you want to use a heavier relay because these small wires aren't going to be enough to supply a ground trigger to this to turn that fan on without damaging the ECU. You want to use a relay, which I have a little bit of a diagram behind me here, which I'll explain a little bit more. And then we'll kind of just draw it out on the board. So ground triggers right here, fans right there, harness that comes out of the additional wiring harness, no big deal. Um, I guess one really we can note about two is the AC fan wire two. So in this mess tangled up thing of wires that I have here. I didn't do myself any favors making this. On this harness where it's one generation older, it's called a rev wire. This is also a ground trigger to turn on an AC fan. So if you have your condenser up there and there's another fan in front or somewhere else, this will be the ground trigger for that. It's only triggered by this AC wire here. So you'll have an AC input wire when it, gets, when it sees that 12 volt signal, goes through the computer, ups your idle a little bit, and then ground triggers this for your extra auxiliary fan. So with all that, let's talk about how they're laid out in the circuitry, and let me move all this out the way. So here we are at the board again, and this is your normal, how you would imagine if you Googled it, how to hook up a relay. You got your switch 12 volt, you've got your 12 volt from battery, you got your ground, and you got your signal that's gonna go out to whatever you're powering. Now, these ones here, well, there we go. These ones here are gonna be heavier gauge. So it's gonna be the big power coming from your battery to send power to a fan or send power to whatever extra thing you're turning on or off, like a fuel pump or what have you not. This right here is gonna be a lighter gauge wire that's gonna be the trigger for it. So there's a little coil in here that has gone off the ground. So when this is supplied 12 volts, it closes the gap and sends the power through the relay to turn on something. So you can get a little bit of power and put out a lot of power using this method. This isn't really what we're doing with the ground triggers on the fans. We're doing this one. This is a ground trigger relay setup. This thing right here, you get 12 volts from the battery to one side of the coil and the 30 right here, which is gonna be the, the supply side. This right here is going to be triggered through the ECU itself, and whenever this says, hey, go to ground, it, it completes the circuit, which will send this power to power your fan. So that's a ground trigger relay. This is just a normal old relay. Nothing too wild. It's just, as you can see, the 12 volt and 12 volt, they're hooked together and go off to the battery. And this is where the, this is where the switch happens, instead of the switch being over here and this being always to ground. So. I'll go ahead and erase this, and then we'll just kind of draw it out a little bit. So bear with me. Look at that, a little bit of Hollywood magic for you. Anywho, I didn't want to bore you guys by me drawing on the board here, but I did a little bit of artwork for you. 
We got the ECU right here, jackpot, kill shot, what have you not, depending on the system you're working with. Jackpot in our case with this install. Fan one and fan two, they're the ground trigger wires. Fan one goes down to the 86 leg of this relay. Fan two goes down to the same leg of a different relay because 86 is usually ground on these things. It's You can do this one or that one, but 86, that's it's just keep it standard, you know what I mean? So anywho, 86 here, 86 there, fan one, fan two. So the power is coming directly from our battery over here. It's got a ground, it's got 12 volts coming out of here, and it supplies 12 volts to 30 and 85 on this relay, and 30 and 85 on that relay. So whenever, your ECU says, hey, we're up to temperature, turn on fan one. This is energized, which closes the contact to send power from 30 to 87, which cruises up and turns on fan one, because fan one's gonna be grounded somewhere else, but it's gonna send power to your fan, which will turn it on. So, and these relays are usually about 40 amps or so. I've never seen them take more than 40 amps. You can use them on like a 20, 20 amp fuse usually. You gotta do a little bit of math. And you want to use a nice 10 gauge wire on this. You want to have good, healthy amount of power with not a lot of heat. Because you're trying to cool something down, you don't want extra heat anyways. So this fan one triggers, turns this on, sends power through the relay to the fan that's already grounded, turns the thing on, it's fantastic. Then your temperature comes up a little bit more depending on your settings, which will trigger the ground side of fan two, which comes in and completely grounds 86, which saturates the solenoid inside, which bridges the gap and closes the contact here, sends power from 30 to 87, and comes out and turns on fan two, which is grounded. So if you got a multimeter, you can actually test to make sure, through like a, like a continuity test, to make sure that these are triggering to ground correctly, that these things have voltage if you wanna do it, that if it, this is triggered, and the you know it closes the contact that you have power on this side right here that's how you're going to diagnose is it the fuse is it the relay is it the fan is it something funny with the ecu or something funny with your settings so that's a very basic way of doing it if we was to do it with the wiring harness we would literally be wiring a relay just like this hooking up the fans and just making it run so the next little bit is going to be we're going to get into, when we get into the tuning and programming in the handheld, there'll be a, a bunch of different sections of that. That we're going to go over everything in like the fan settings and temperature settings. And, you know, the, the same thing with the, the AC, because it's going to be a different wire. It's going to be that rev wire. So when the rev wire has a signal going to it, because we had 12 volts coming in from the AC compressor coming on, it'll idle up a little bit, send a ground signal to your other relay, to your other fan. So you can send all three fans if you want, or you can tie it in to one of these. You can take your rev wire or AC trigger wire and tie it to fan one or fan two if you want your AC to come on and you only have two fans. It's not gonna hurt anything. I did a bit of testing on that. So you can, can tie those together, not a massive deal. So hopefully that kind of demystifies, this is what you do to do it. Feel free to screenshot this actually, but this will be in a much nicer document in our tech area of the website with wiring fans. I'll make it a much better graphic with some photo, photo examples as well in the document, but that's the, that's the quick and dirty on it. This will make it work. So get your settings right, figure out what temperatures you wanna run, wire it appropriately, good decisions on what gauge wires to run. These are very small gauge but the power wires up to the fan kind of need to be a little bit, little bit healthier. So I would recommend a 10 gauge because it's not gonna really have a lot of resistance. It's not gonna make a lot of heat. I hope this helps out. So hang in here with us. We're gonna get into the programming very, very soon in one of the next videos and uh, thank you.